Muammar Gaddafi had a dispute with Octagon Switzerland for years before his death on October 20th, 2011. And when in September 2009 he openly said that Switzerland should be abolished, I knew they were going to pull the plug because you don't criticize Switzerland of the Nazi Templars like that publicly without putting your life in grave danger just as I, Sean Ross, am experiencing this. So here it says in the Daily Mail on, in September 3rd, 2009 uh, Colonel Gaddafi wants to abolish Switzerland and then it gets very dangerous. There it is, the mail, the daily in the mail online, big newspaper. Here you can read the old article. So, if anybody has any doubts why he died, you know. Then, in February 2010, he even openly called for and declared a fatwa and holy Islamic Jihad against Switzerland. And one year later, he was dead. It says, Muammar Gaddafi has reportedly been blacklisted by Switzerland. They pulled the plug. And here it says, February 26th, 2010. He died one year later in 2011. It says again, and this is the BBC. This is the mainstream. Switzerland has put Gaddafi on a black list. Here it says. And we all know what happened to him. This is about his son. And here is about a Swiss man surrenders to Libyans because the uh, Gaddafi he uh, arrested some Swiss financial uh, criminals in Libya as well. And he criticized the Swiss, you know, for showing Muslims like all sort of and immigrants in Switzerland like all sort of animals, and um, well, you know, no wonder you know reactions will come if Switzerland doesn't uh, abide by the international rules anymore. I hear some more on the Telegraph. It was all over, really. Colonel Gaddafi calls for jihad against Switzerland in 2010. You may criticize the USA, Russia, or the UK, and live on. But you don't talk about the motherland of the Nazi Templars like that. And here's already the shadow of Octogon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, watching over Gaddafi's shoulder. I want to see a Swiss system. I mean, I wouldn't mind being conquered by Switzerland right now. It all started in July 2008 when the Swiss Nazi police arrested his son in Geneva Hotel Wilson based upon a construction of lies. And I know this because I had contacts right around the corner through my old Jewish friend Mr. Zilberman, who was acquainted with some employees of the Wilson Hotel, saying it was all a setup. Why? Well, let's follow the money trail. In Switzerland, the biggest chain of petrol stations, or ga gas stations as they might call it in the colonies, is called Tamoil. And Tamoil is from Libya and Gaddafi's oil. Here's on Wikipedia. It says here, Tamoil is the trading name of the Oil Invest BV Group. Uh, the Tamoil Group, which was pur purchased by Libyan state entities in the late 1980s put in the link for you. Plus the fact that the revolutionary leader had assets of 168 billion dollars spread around the world and mostly in the Swiss banks 
And then things get very dangerous, as the Jews too had to find out the hard way during the Second World War. And because of Switzerland, it says, the Swiss official, officials have gone into Libya to help the National Transitional Council freeze the Gaddafi regime assets in their tax haven. Prosecutors go to Libya to freeze Gaddafi's Swiss assets. The moment he was dead. And they did already before, actually. I'll put in the links for you. So I'll show you the whole story here. Here it says... Um, to trace billions of dollars that Colonel Muammar Gaddafi uh, hid in Switzerland. Well, much of this is suspected to have been hidden in Switzerland. Well, of course. Why, where else? And why else would they have killed him? Yeah. So here it says the fallen dictator is believed to have had around 168 billion dollars in assets abroad, most of which has been frozen since the start of the year. And then the Swissies are very quick. Immediately when he was dead, they went over there. Otherwise they don't do anything, you know, like, oh, they love money, the Swissies. Yeah. Well, you can read the whole story here. I show it to you. I put in the links for you. So Swissy froze Gaddafi's money, which is another word for confiscation or just plain Swiss theft. As well, confiscating Tamil petrol stations and refinery in Switzerland with a yearly turnover of two point seven billion dollars. Here it says two point seven billion dollars. And it's the number one petrol company in Switzerland. It has been the country since 1990. So since 1990, he has risked his life, Mr. Gaddafi, you know. So, and here's about the Libyan Investment Authority. Plus the LIA, or Libyan Investment Authority, with 70 billion dollars investments worldwide. Here you can see, 70 billion uh, dollars in invested worldwide. And all this has gone into the hands of Switzerland. They stole it all. And this is why Mohammed Gaddafi had to die. You can read the whole article, I'll put it in the links for you. Just punch pause. It's all there, really. Here you see, now that uh, Gaddafi is dead, so this is in 2012, Swissy is coming with their terror authorities to clean up the... Um, the Tamoil, you know, so they want another, some more millions of the Libyan people. And uh, this really shows how they are, you know, they're a bunch of backstabbers, you know. So nobody ever hears anything of it, but, you know, this is how they steal. And they really, if you, if you, you know, this is the difference with other countries. You know, like in France or, you know, or, or the, in the UK, if you're lying down, you know, or if you're like a homeless, you say, well, okay, he's had enough, leave him alone, you know. But in Switzerland, the moment you're down and you can't defend yourselves, then they really start, you know, like kicking you and, and pushing you down, you know, as they're doing with me. And, th and this is a real big difference with other peoples and other um, um, mental sets, you know, of, of, of peoples. You know, when Gaddafi was still alive, they wouldn't dare, you know, to do a thing like this, you know, and it's completely illegal. They, they just do what they want. And now there's no more Gaddafi and the Libyans can't defend themselves. So now they come with these sort of things, you know, when they're lying on the ground, they really come kicking as they're doing with me. I tell you, this is what the Swiss are. They did the same thing with the Jews. The moment they had them, like inside the camps, you know, 
Then they took all the money and the Nazi gold and gave the Red Cross passport to the Nazi red line, you know, to go to South America. This is so typical Switzerland. And in this aspect, they are not human. This, this is not a human thing to do. No other European people would do this, not even the Germans. This is Swiss. And look back at the policeman I filmed with his evil black eyes and, and the UFO or whatever it was hovering over. They're not normal. No other people would do this, you know, like kidnap children and, and this is Switzerland. Years ago, I visited the Libyan embassy in Bern, Switzerland a few times. And you could just walk in there with all the gates and doors wide open like a Bedouin's tent in the desert. There was no security personnel, no humiliating hands all over your body, nothing at all. Then inside you could choose yourself whether you wanted to walk through the metal detector gate or just pass next to it. Which I did, of course. And after that there was tea or coffee and very polite, decent and real friendly people. Gaddafi's embassy in Bern, Switzerland was the only embassy in town resembling a drive-in. Whereas any other standing too long in the area of another embassy in Bern, Switzerland would have you arrested, as they did with me on February the 26th at 9 o'clock in the morning of 2009 near the US Embassy. They arrested me like a thug with a Swiss policeman called S. Lascha, L-A-C-H-A-T, poking his rifle butt in my stomach, then spending half the day in detention for nothing. I want to see a Swiss system. I mean, I wouldn't mind being conquered by Switzerland right now. Gaddafi was a nuisance to Pharaoh and Pharaoh's empire. As he once told King Abdullah from Saudi Arabia on March 30th, 2009, that he was a puppet set in place by the British monarchy and protected by America. I will put the, the video here in the links for you. Just listen to it. He tried to do something against against Pharaoh and their base, Switzerland. Here you can read some more about it. This is in 2009 when Switzerland started this all, and then of course the uh, all the puppets worldwide did they you know they took it over. So he said like to uh, the king um, Ab Abdullah or Abdullah. <laughs> He said, well, you were made by Britain and protected by the U.S. Well, he is, you know, he's, he's related to the, to, the, to the English Queen. And uh, through the bloodline of uh, Mohammed, the, uh, the Islamic prophet, because uh, one of his descendants uh, was in Spain, in Cordoba. And they had children with the... Um, the Spanish royal bloodline, uh, and, and then they met the English royal bloodline. It's all related, you know. It doesn't mean that Mohammed was bad or something. It was just one of his ends, of his uh, of his uh, descendants who did so. He didn't have any control about that, of course. And um, but this started with Switzerland. Switzerland pulled the plug, and then he. He saw the enemy, you know, well, every, everyone turned an enemy upon him, you know. This is the power Switzerland have. And you can see it happening here. Even within the Arab world, all those pharaohs like King Abdullah and Mubarak and, you know, they, and, and Saddam Hussein, and well, they all turned against um, Muammar Gaddafi. Because Switzerland gave the order. It's what I've been telling you. The Templars give the worldwide orders. And the whole worldwide net of uh, Masons, they just obey. Just as America, since the first Gulf, Gulf War in, uh, in 1991, well, they had more than 20 years, you know, to, to, to have a sort of um, 
like the Nazis did, you know, um, Lebensborn, to make children, you know, to, to rape women and, and keep them prisoners. So, so they have a new generation of uh, Arab looking uh, pharaohs or pharaonic descent, you know, who went into the, uh, the army in, um, in, in Iraq, well, the new army with this entirely uh, American outfit, you know, do, perpetrating more crimes and taking the oil of the Iraqi people. So that's why the Islamic State, and now there's Khorasan, uh, they know this. And uh, they are young guys who don't want it. You know, yeah. We're all being lied to by these pharaohs and their, their lying media and their base, Switzerland. This is the real enemy of mankind. Of course, Gaddafi was a pharaoh as well, just as Lady Diana and many others. But uh, he had a certain love for mankind, you know. Just look at the, he's always sleeping in his tent. Uh, like expressing his disgust for all the, you know, the rest of the pharaohs. And they're having internal strifes, you know, internal wars, which we have to fight, usually. And this is what happened in Libya. The people had to fight the wars between the pharaohs themselves. Otherwise, Mr. Gaddafi would never have become the, uh, the, the revolutionary leader. Like, but he had, he had a completely different idea. He was not a bad man. Um, he's being considered to be the good pharaoh, like da Lady Diana and uh, John F. Kennedy, all of pharaonic uh, aristocratic descent. But above all this stands the base of the Templars in the Alps, giving all the orders to the worldwide web of Masons on all key positions. And of those orders, included the fate of the revolutionary leader of Africa, Colonel Gaddafi. And soon after, NATO's missiles were raining down on Libya's small army with Apache gunships flying the streets, gunning down everyone sticking out his nose too far and using depleted uranium. So here I'll show you the entire thing here. Here's depleted, Ameri uh, depleted uranium. You see the uranium tip here? Well, these are crimes against humanity. I mean, brother, what are you doing here? Go to Ferguson. There's the enemy. What are you doing there? Some more depleted. So you understand why the Islamic State or IS, they are angry. They're very, very angry and they won't forget it because these are massive crimes against humanity. What the NATO is doing and uh, massive, massive crimes, you know, children being born without limbs and it's evil. And it's all, the orders are from Switzerland. The Swiss Nazi Templars are on all key positions in the US, including Swiss President Obama from Switzerland. And all this started with a minor litigation between Switzerland and Gaddafi's son. And then Octagon pulled the plug. Here you can see uh, Obama's gene genealogy tree. And here are some of his Swiss ancestors. Here it says the, uh, the Swiss roots of President Barack Obama. They are in Kurtzers, in Ried, in the canton of Bern. I mean, this is a... Uh, so this was in the newspaper in 2010. So, I mean, <laughs> this is what democracy leaves open, you know. You can just... Infiltrate with your Swiss fifth column of sleeper cells and go for the key positions, police, army. You can see it happening in Ferguson with the uh, I am Darren Wilson bracelets. They, they changed their names. I've proven that to you. And they just take uh, hostage of your country. 
this is what's happening. This is the Swiss are doing it. Send send this information all around. You know, and here it says uh, this uh, genealogy genealogy tree proves that Barack Obama is Swiss. It was in the Swiss newspaper. They all figured it out. You know, here's some more. Uh, relatives of Barack Obama in Switzerland. Their names are Gutknecht, Meyer, and he even has a um, a, um, after, a son of a grandson called Lars Meyer. Uh, here with his mother, Anne Dunham. So apparently this Anne Dunham is, she's of, uh, well, it's always by the woman, you know, it's, it's the sisters of Isis. The, uh, the idea, which is the, um, the Holy Spirit, the, the, uh, the Trinity, the Holy Spirit and idea of Isis, it passes over the women, the sisters of Isis, you know. And here's, I suppose this is uh, a YouTube video. And here too it says Barack Obama is also Swiss. Well, and they pulled the plug, you know, all together here. They pulled the plug to have Muammar Gaddafi liquidated. It was a setup. I mean, I wouldn't mind being conquered by Switzerland right now. It's very interesting he says exactly this because this has already happened and he must know this otherwise he wouldn't say it. He is initiated. This is fifth column Swiss sleeper cells. And he's going he's preparing you here. The Swiss always have their dirty little, little fingers in it somehow and somewhere.